Welcome to our home. The, um, the lecture this week is going to deal with the uh, stars, the sand, and the earth. So, again, this week on my thought I'd like to examine as to why God Almighty chose to compare the children of Israel first to the stars of the sky, the sands of the seashore, and then the dust of the earth. What exactly do these three references tell us? Now, the first time that God Almighty says that the children of Israel will be like the stars of the heaven was at the Brit Ben Hapsorim, the covenant between the parts. There, God informed Avinu, Abraham, our father, that his descendants would be as numerous as the stars of the sky. God tells Avinu, Abraham, our father, at a time when he had not yet fathered any children. This was stated in the portion of Lethlechah. There, God informed him to look up to the sky and count the stars. God said, if you can count them all, then that is how many numerous your descendants will be. Now, after the test of the Akedah, where God Almighty had asked Avinu, Abraham, to bring up his son Yitzchak as a sacrifice, the portion ends with Avinu being informed by the angel of God in the portion of Ayera that I will greatly bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the heaven. So, the question we must ask is, why the reference to the stars in the heaven? So there are numerous answers that are given to this question. The first answer is that God intimated to Avram that the number of stars in the sky are beyond counting. Also, that the stars of the sky, from our vantage point, appear to be much smaller than the planet Earth that we are on. However, in reality, they are all much larger. The same can be said about a Jew. Though they may appear to be small and insignificant in this world, but in the next world, well, they shine as bright as the pre and precious as the stars in the heavens. Another fact about the stars is that a sailor on the open seas at night can navigate his position as long as he can see the stars. An example would be the North Star, which is always positioned in the north sky. In addition, we are told by our sages that sadikim, righteous individuals, who have passed on to the next world are compared to the stars of the sky, since after their death, they are many times viewed by people as much greater than they were viewed in, in their lifetime. We are also told that sadikim in death are actually able to reach much higher spiritual plateaus in heaven than they were capable of reaching while they resided on earth. And finally, though the stars are great, still they are separate. Each star is an entity on their own. In a sense, they are missing the concept of what we call achtut, unity. This may be a reason as to why scientists have yet to discover any life form existing on any planet other than Earth. The children of Israel also referred to in the portion of the Akedah as the sands of the seashore, as it states. Your descendants will be as numerous as the sands on the seashore. Now the sands of the seashore represent unity in that they are all touching one grain lying next to another. Yet, at the same time, really, they are all separate since each granule of sand is individual and distinct. The sands are the watchmen of the world. They fulfill their mission by turning back the waters of the world so that the oceans and seas do not flood the world again and revert it back to tohu vavohu, emptiness and void. They do have the ability to guard the world, but they lack the ability to make most things grow. And so to each and every Jew, in this world is a separate and distinct individual with their own special mission. Sand by itself is limited in its ability to produce any plant life. However, when soil is mixed together with sand, then it can become very productive, in fact, even preferable. And so, too, when a Jew stands by themselves, they are limited in what they can accomplish. However, with the assistance of their brethren, there are great strides that can be attained. You know, this world can only exist due to the protection that the Jewish nation affords to all of creation. 
by their observance of Torah and mitzvot. You know, we are told by our sages that the world is sustained through the children of Israel observing the Shabbat. Shabbat is the day that regenerates within the world the power to sustain itself for another week. We have a tradition that if all the Jews in the world were to decide in unison not to keep one Shabbat, then the whole world would cease to exist. So the Jewish nation, much like the sands of the seashore, protect the world from annihilation, protecting what is already in existence. However, the sands of the seashore do not have the power to make anything grow by themselves. Growth is a product of achdut, of unity, something that the sands of the seashore do not possess. Again and again, the Torah alludes to the children of Israel as the dust of the earth. God tells Abraham, you know, Abraham, our father, in the portion of Lechlecha, again, that I will make your offspring like the dust of the earth. If a man will be able to count all the grains of dust in the world, then your offspring will also be countable. Then once again in the portion of Ayetze, God tells Yaakov of him, Jacob our father, your descendants will be like the dust of the earth. The question we must ask is, again, why are the children of Israel compared to the dust of the earth? Earth does possess the attribute of Achtut, of unity. Unity has the power, the ability to achieve success in all arenas. There is power in numbers. The one person is important in Judaism, as we witness that God Almighty created this whole world for only one person. This fact teaches us that every person, every person is important in the eyes of God Almighty. Yet we also are taught about the power of the multitude. We have a precept in Torah and Judaism that Barov Am Hadras Melech, that in a multitude of people, the king is praised. So um, we need a minimum of two people that are necessary to be valid witnesses and to testify in a Jewish court of law. Ten men are needed to form a quorum, a minion for prayer. The smallest number of men associated with any of the tribes in the desert was 22,000. We also read that when God Almighty came down to the mountain of Sinai to give the Torah to the children of Israel, he was accompanied with a retinue of 22,000 angels. In addition, a necessity for the children of Israel to receive the Torah on Mount Sinai was that there be at least 600,000 men between the ages of 20 to 60 in attendance. Earth, unlike the stars of the sand, stars or the sands, is capable of complete octos, unity. One grain of earth has the ability to bind together with another, and together they have the capability to form one solid mass. Vegetation grows within the depths of the earth. The soil is the womb of creation, Mother Earth. The rain that falls onto the earth is like the father that supplies the sperm of creation. The children of Israel can be compared to one body, each with their own special mission, each a part of the whole. It makes no difference which part of the body one occupies. Each part is essential for its survival. Humility allows us to join together in perfect harmony. Just like all earth is not the same, different soils are made up of different levels of quality. Some fields contain soil which is more fertile than others. They therefore have the possibility of growing better quality and greater yields of produce than those fields that are inferior. The same can be said about people. Not all people are created equal. There are those individuals who are by their very nature smarter, kinder, and more giving than others. They are just naturally able to be more productive in their lives. However, they still have the challenge to cultivate, cultivate the soil that they were blessed with and hopefully harvest the fruits of their labors. Everyone that God has created in this world has some special purpose. Everyone has some special talent that they are expected to develop while they are still on this earth. However, just like a farmer can add fertilizer, a waste product, to the soil to make it more productive, so too a person 
can use the fertilizer in their life, the negativity that they have incurred, and turn their negative into a positive lesson to grow their medot, their character traits. These challenges in life are what assist us in becoming better and more refined individuals. As I quote many times, good judgment comes from experience, and experience comes from bad judgment. You read in the last paragraph of the Amida three times daily, the Hebrew words, nafshi ka'afar ha'kol that my, that my soul shall be like dust to everyone. Humility. If someone perceives himself as dust, insignificant, alluded to by the Hebrew word tia, will be, present tense, then they will live a good life in this world. Now, according to the teachings of Kabbalah, one can exchange the letter he, Hebrew letter he and the Hebrew letter chet, which changes the word from tia to tichia, will live future tense. So if someone perceives himself as earth, humility, then they will be blessed not only in this world, but also in the world to come. In addition, we read in the portion of Miketz that the grain that the Egyptian people stored in their silos rotted. Yet somehow Yosef's grain did not. Rashi commenting on this verse tells us that Yosef placed together with the grain some of the earth in each locality into their silos, and it preserved the produce from rotting. So too with each of us. When we allow humility, soil so to speak, to dictate our personalities, then we have the ability and possibility to grow. We witnessed the humility was the, the character trait that Avram Avinu, Abraham our father, personified. As he said of himself in the portion of Ayera, on the offer of the Afer, I am nothing more than dust and ashes. Total humility. Now, the numerical value of the gematria of the Hebrew words offer ve'efer is 631. This number can be a composite of the 613 mitzvot plus the number 18, which signifies life. The way for a person to attain true life in this world is through humbly observing the laws of the Torah. 631. Many times we use a Hebrew term called derech eretz, which is translated as the way of the land. It is also a term that refers to proper conduct, decency. Our sages tell us that a person should conduct themselves much like the earth. We observe that the earth in its total humility never refuses anyone or anything the permission to tread upon its soil. It never complains. This is an important lesson for us, to not let our egos extend itself to the point that everyone seems to step on it. There is no commandment that the sages, pardon me, that states that we need to answer every negative remark that we hear. The only reason that we get angry is ego. They said that to me, or they did that to me. Ego is always about being self-centered. If we think more about other people and less about ourselves, you know, then maybe, just maybe, we can be more like the earth that we walk upon and somehow, that somehow never seems to complain. Hopefully now that we have a better understanding as to why God Almighty refers to the children of Israel with these three phrases of the stars, the sand, and the earth. With that in mind, let us use these words to help us to usher in the coming of Mashiach Sukkana quickly and in our time. Again, let me thank you for attending. Again, God should bless you with health and with happiness and with success. Um, again, shortly after this uh, recording, we will start the, a musical portion. Um, that today we'll deal with the very important prayer of Moda Anami. Thank you very much for listening. God bless. Shabbat Shalom.